All right, welcome everyone to Sunday Morning Grace. Today is Sunday, May 16th, and I am once again so, God, I just like get tears in my eyes. So proud, so honored, so, so touched to be sharing space today with two more of our seminary students, Nelia Costa and Beverly Ayala. Did I say that name? You know, I've never really said your last name out loud, Beverly. <laughs> Did I say it right? You did okay. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for allowing immediate forgiveness. There. <laughs> so um, we are really excited to be sharing and having a conversation on the topic of beauty, continuing that conversation that uh, Reverends Marianne and Jamie discussed last week and Reverends Carolyn and Dawn will be continuing and actually finishing things up for us next week. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna do the opening blessing and then we're gonna dig in. So just invite you all to settle into your bodies. And just feel into the idea, the concept of beauty. And what it means to you not what society has told you, not what anybody else has shown you, but what beauty means authentically to you. And just allowing that awareness to come forward for you. And just being curious about whatever it is that comes forward. Curious to learn how beauty can expand your life experience. Deepen your connection with source. And many times show you the way. And with your next breath, just Receive anything else you need to receive at this time. And then when you are ready, bring your focus and your attention back to the space this time and we will begin. All right. So when we were first talking about beauty and you know what it really means to each of you, you both had just really incredible words of wisdom to share. So um, I'd love for you guys to share those things with, with our people here. What does, what does beauty mean to you, Nelia? So beauty to me is nature. Even during the blessing, I'm sitting here, I'm outside, I can hear the birds. There's different birds. There's all these different nature sounds. And it just, that helps me center and just feel that there really is beauty in everything around us. Um, but this morning, it occurred to me that there's even beauty in pain. And that's a lot harder to say. That there are, say again, I'm sorry. Beauty in pain. Yeah. So in our pain and our struggle, and sometimes when we look back on our life, you know, we see these different things that happen to us. And I had a friend yesterday actually say that she regretted a lot of her life. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I asked her, you know, to kind of expand on that, she said, you know, I really wish I had made certain decisions at different times. And I really feel like, you know, I wasted a lot of my time and it really got me to thinking, you know, that there's beauty in that, that you know, it's really hard. It's hard when, you know, you feel that sadness and that disappointment and regret to see that, you know, there really was beauty along the way. And, you know, sometimes it's very well hidden, <laughs> but it's there. Um, yeah, so that was my biggest revelation, I guess, this morning was, you know, to really dig in and see the beauty and the pain because it's easy to see oh they're beautiful flowers but yeah. when it's a 
harder, you know, when it's maybe a yard that's a mess or a garden that hasn't been weeded, mm-hmm. it's harder to see that beauty. Mm. And I think that's when it's more important to see the beauty because that then gives you a vision for the possibility mm. that out of the pain. I love that. Yeah, I love that, uh, that vision of possibility. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, because it's hard, you know, it's really easy to look at something and be like, oh my God, like it's just such a disaster. But to be able to go in and pick out those beautiful moments and say, but you know what, like I learned X, Y, Z, or I would have experienced, um, I would have never experienced whatever it was, had it not been for this excruciating event or struggle that I had to go through and persevere through and look where I am because of it. Like a soul lesson kind of. Yeah. 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 So what are you thinking over there, Beverly? I am amazed at how that came through because it ties right into what I was thinking. I was saying, what is beauty to you? And you can go outside, you can see it in nature, you can see it within your families. But then I started thinking, I really believe, because I spent my whole life looking for peace and happiness. And I've found it now, and I find it's from within. Once you're able to be within yourself and love yourself for who you are, not what society said you should be, or how you should dress, but who you are, then you're able to take this experience and spread it out to people. And as you go forward, more people realize, and they'll notice that weed and not think of that weed as, oh, I need to pull it, but it has beauty of its own. And it's the same with people. It's the same with animals. My favorite animal is a moose. They're really homely. And he keeps coming to my yard and I'm getting a little ticked now because I have to pick up after him. But I see beauty in it because I know in a month or two with the baby, he'll bring the baby. And it's just the cycle starting again to see the beauty from within to without. And so beauty can be whatever you call it, but it has to be personable to you so you can expel it outward. Mm. I love that. And it's, it's so often, I want to say probably for most people, really a journey of being able to see the inner beauty, you know, and to really being able to appreciate it. And it's not like it's a, okay, done. It's this ongoing process of, oh, okay, this wart came up inside. I need to work with it and, and go deep into the beauty of what that, um, whatever it is, that vibration, that disharmony is. It's interesting because every night I, I say things I am thankful for and in the morning, and now I've incorporated what beauty I've seen or what is beautiful to me. And in the first parts of the month, I started out with nature and the critters. And then I kind of moved into humans and people and family. And now I notice, I look at what I did for the day, what I was able to show someone else. And it's, it's just, it's like a lotus flower. It's just blossoming. It's mm-hmm. just out and out and out and it just spreads. So beauty, beauty and beautiful are a very powerful word and they lead to love and love makes the world go round. Sure does. I well, love that. Yeah, and you know, anybody listening to you might be thinking, oh, well, uh, maybe she's one of those people that's had a really easy life and, you know, and, and I just want to, without getting into any details, I just want you to know that, that both of these lovely women have, you know, they've, they've been through a lot in life that has brought them to this place of, of beautiful serenity, you know, and, um, which I just wanted to share and, and in honor to you both, first of all, but also to just lay the context, because I, I think sometimes 
um, people think that this is attainable for others, but not me, you know, and I think, you know, everybody understanding that this experience of seeing yourself as beautiful within so that you then are able to see the beauty without is, is accessible to everyone. It takes a lot of work at times, you know, for some soul, souls more than other others. You're giggling, Nelia. I am because I don't I also want to make sure like it's not a finite place yeah right because it's not like oh wow I love and accept myself today and forevermore <laughs> right because tomorrow it might not be you that case right there's always those triggers there's always those you know whatever it can be that comes up and is like oh are you sure <laughs> are you sure you love and accept yourself like right now with what you're feeling and thinking and it's always that opportunity for growth mm -hmm. to look at that and go okay like why am I feeling this like why what am I being triggered like what is it that's triggering inside me that you know sometimes I really thought I had healed and it's like really like this again and it's just that deeper level that maybe you hadn't been able to access before but now because of other healing because it really is like an onion like layers of an onion I always wreck um <laughs> and donkey couldn't you be a parfait like everybody loves parfait no it's like an onion like sometimes it's hard like it makes you cry but it also adds so much flavor and without that it's like if it was always sunny you wouldn't appreciate the sunny days right. you know and we need that flavoring in life and sometimes it's not pleasant but it's still beautiful like it still adds to that overall painting of our lives and who we are and how we affect the world. And I love that, Beverly. And, you know, what am I going to do today that's beautiful? Like, how am I going to affect somebody's life in a beautiful way? And bring that awareness. So maybe they can look at themselves with tenderness and compassion like we do for others. And it's so much harder to do it for ourselves. I don't know why. And I do think to a large extent, it's a choice too you know for sure it takes work and there may be times where we're like yeah no I can't go there right now but that's okay you know just being open to going there as soon as it's accessible to you Beverly you have that wise you get this this <laughs> look on your face when I know that there's some pearls of wisdom that are gurgling up it's exactly how Nelia said it's layers and every day I have to face up to a challenge and I have to analyze it, but I chose to do that. It's easy to go through life and just skate along. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of where you want to be. And those are choices we all make. And by going deeper, you can sit and see your triggers. You can see why. And I've found lately that um, I find it perfectly fine just to sit and do nothing because I, I can't figure it out. I don't know what to do. And there's so many things to do. Like today, our house is being remodeled or repainted. I don't even have lights. I didn't even, I don't even have a mirror to look at. To see, and I don't have a mirror, you know, a physical mirror to look at to see what I look like. And it is what it is. So rather than worry about it and get upset, I just sat and like, Beauty's all around you. It's where you have to find it. And that helps you get through each day and each experience and each lesson. And then as you look back, you see how far you've come. And that's what's so beautiful. Because this has been a long journey for me. I started in like 2009 and I'm still, you know, having issues. But there are lessons to learn to create where you want to be. And that is your choice. And do you find in that long journey that you've been through, 12 years, it sounds like, since you sort of consciously started, do you find that the difference, because those, those issues, those challenges are going to come up, do you find that there's a difference with when something comes up that you approach it differently now that you yes. have more awareness? That, that's amazing because I like everything ordered and da, 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 and senses move nothing has been in order, but I've learned to deal with it differently. And I go with the flow as they say, and 
I can't even get somebody to help me with my yard until the end of July. Mm. And I can't do it, but I go out and I do what I can do. And that's all you're expected to do, to put that foot forward every day and to be the best and do the best you can do. And sure, there's days where you don't even want to get out of bed. Maybe you just need rest. Maybe you need time to relax because you've done it for everybody else except yourself. So there's a big circle around that to how you have to see how you perceive things and how you go forward. But you just continue at your own pace. I love that. And we all need that now, you know, that self-nurturing is what I'm feeling like you're touching on. Knowing how to take care of yourself. Me time. Pardon? Me time. Yes. Yes, exactly. So now, yeah, when we were, when we met last week talking about this, one of the things that you shared about nature and just being in this tree behind you was just so magnificent. I love it. Um, you said that being in nature makes you feel that much more connected to God. And yeah, can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, of course. Um, it does, you know, especially, I mean, right now, obviously I'm in the front yard, there's cars driving by, there's all this stuff happening. But when I am actually, but even then, I mean, I can hear different critters and, you know, the birds. And it, do, it just brings me to that place where there is no question that there is a higher power. Like whatever, you know, your beliefs are, there's no question to me that it's just, it's in nature. There's no way to be in nature and not feel it. Um, and I feel like if I am ever in a place where I need that clarity or I need that quiet time to really self-reflect and assess, I feel like nature, you know, whether it's trees or running water or the ocean or whatever it may be, but it just, when I'm in that place and I just close my eyes, I can feel that connection to spirit in a way that I don't feel it anywhere else. Mm. Mm. And I'm sure that's different for everybody, but for me, like, that's how I, that's how I feel connected. Like the earth is my church. Like I am grounded in mother nature and we're here. I mean, without the earth, we would have nothing. And I think sometimes we forget that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like kill the trees. They provide oxygen. Like what? But yeah, that's where, you know, I feel like there is no question. There's no question. I mean, the, the perfection of a flower. There's no question that that comes from the divine. You have some little, I don't know if it's a red squirrel or a bird or something that is is chiming in here and just like, underscoring everything you're saying, Nalia. I don't know where he is. I'll <laughs> get somewhere in the trees up here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know, I'm just thinking as you're talking um, that, you know, you talk about the perfection of the flower and, um, and all of nature and we're part of it, mm. you know? So I think we tend to like think it's us and then nature you know, and, and we're, we're part of this whole that I, I agree with you. I think a lot of times we forget about, and um, I too, I'm like, if I'm, if I'm needing a boost, I just go outside. I, I love to be barefoot and <laughs> feet on the earth. And <laughs> why are you laughing? Because I am right now. <laughs> I'm sitting in my cute little dress in the front yard, but I have no shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Are you thinking any, anything you want to add to that, Beverly? Um, I, I was just thinking something, but I got married barefoot. <laughs> you really? <laughs> Church. <laughs> um, I, I agree that nature is very calming and brings you back to earth or roots you, as you would say. And even psychiatrists say when you get upset, nervous, or angry, 
to stand up, walk, and go outside. Because mm. it does have a calming effect, and it does bring you back to yourself, and you're able to handle things. Mm. Having problems, I mean, I walked for hours. I thought, well, this I'm, and I, it was ridiculous, but you know, when you got back home and you sat down, you looked at everything differently and you realized that nature is very, very powerful to bring you in line. And we're all one, as she said, and, and whatever you call it, source, power, God, they're all there and they're all bringing it down through the physical plane. And that's what it's showing us through what has been given to us. Mm -hmm. You're reminding me as you're you're talking of this, and I'm not going to get it 100% right, but I hopefully can get the essence of it, is that the earth has this, um, and I think it varies from geographical location to geographical location, but it has its own pulse. Mm -hmm. And so when we are able to connect directly with the earth, we connect directly with that pulse that is actually a really important um, connection that we're so, many of us are so not connected to right now. And I know there's this whole thing uh, of grounding your bed. There's grounding wires that you can put into the earth to sleep with the, um, with this connected to this pulse. And again, I'm, I, if anybody asks me like details on that, I'm, I'm gonna say Google, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I do know that the, the earth does have its pulse and that we are meant to be connected to it. And when we're not connected to it, um, we struggle, pure and simple. That's true. Like in a very, I guess, and I'm sharing that because I, I think it makes it more physical. Like when you realize that there's this, this, this pulse that we are supposed to be connecting to. But Energy wavelengths. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm. So, um, now you touched, you touched on this at the beginning about um, finding beauty in the pain, um, you know, and, and I think we've talked a bit about, you know, it's easier to see the beauty when either within or without when, you know, it's sunny <laughs> within or without. Um, but let's just a little bit more on the when it's not. You know, when there's a storm happening inside or there's a storm happening, you know, you know, whatever, however you want to define that on the outside. Because um, Beverly, you mentioned some things on when we met as well about that. You know, right, you, you were talking about it specifically, I think you were talking about um, people in the world who need us to reach out to them. What I'm, I was referring to is, it's not just you, we are a whole, and it's just not our city, our families are here. Other people in the world are able to reach out through their pain and their lives and see the beauty in it by connecting again back to nature. For instance, people who live in a hut with dirt floors and no electricity, no running water, but they're happy. They've found happiness. They've gone within. They've looked forward to expanding. And I think a lot of it is we are so hung up on social media, electronics, and we've forgotten what it's like to be quiet. Mm -hmm. And without the quietness, around us, you have no calm, you have no peace. And this is what we're all missing as a whole. And we need to work together to bring that back to where we were. It's not saying stop, you know, the socialized myth, you know, stuff. What it's saying is learning how to live in balance with it. Mm -hmm. We're just out of balance through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do feel like focusing on the beauty is a path to accomplishing that. Mm -hmm. Nelia. Yeah, touching on that whole social media thing though, I think oftentimes we tend to tie our self-worth with how many likes we get. Mm -hmm. 
and that can be a dangerous slippery slope and that's where it comes back to what Beverly was saying you know it really has to be an inside job like you have to feel that within yourself and that beauty within yourself and not rely on that from outside sources but then I think also you know spreading that joy in person like in human not on social media I mean sure social media too but you know walking down the street and smiling at somebody or when you're stopped at a stoplight like how often do we look over at the person in the car next to us and you look away real quick because you're like oh my god do they see me? are they looking at me and it's like <laughs> it's a human in a car like you're at the same stop sign at the same you know same light smile like wave say hi and sometimes people are like oh god this woman is crazy I'm like maybe but we're all humans here having the same human experience and I think especially with COVID that we're so conditioned to not interact in person that it's super important especially now to get back to those in-person connections where it's like oh wow like somebody's walking down the street and if I'm ever out in the yard <laughs> and somebody walks down my street especially if it's in the morning I always say good morning and some people respond right away and they're like oh good morning and other people actually stop and pause and are like oh, this woman is she me <laughs> yep <laughs> you're walking by my house I am saying good morning you know and just yeah it's crazy to me like how foreign it is to say good morning to somebody walking by your house it's not true everywhere so I think we can you know bit by bit as we're bold with our our good mornings and and whatnot we we begin to create change because I see the same thing around here and I think New England is known for being a little closed. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps that's it. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, you know, I'm sure it's not, it's, I, I'm certain it's other places too, but yeah. you, you can create change. <laughs> For sure. So any, any sort of other final thoughts on the topic of, of beauty? And I feel like in some ways we've used it almost interchangeably with self-worth but it does feel different you know and um I, I i feel like maybe tuning into that a little bit because you know valuing something seeing it with worth is is a part of that experience but beauty takes it through a different channel through a different lens that's the word i'm looking for so any, any uh, final thoughts about that or, or anything else? Yeah, I think just, you know, honoring our uniqueness mm -hmm. and really consciously being aware of the beauty that comes forth when you let your true self shine. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Beauty does come from within, but you have to see it on the outside first. But it's for everybody and everything to appreciate it and accept it for what it is, not to put any dimension on it. And then it's all there for everyone to see and enjoy. Mm. So I just had this little, um, as you were talking, this little thing in my head of the flowers outside and, and thinking, do you think like the wisteria looks at the dandelion and says, no, you're, you're too ugly, <laughs> you know, or, or the rose looks at the daffodil or they're probably not blooming at the same time, but you know, it's like there, it isn't, they're all just beautiful and they're all just unique and they're all just, and, and to your both of your points, the more that we're able to see ourselves as those unique flowers, those unique expressions of beauty, like how beautiful is that? I agree. Yes. Yeah. 
So um, are you both feeling complete before we go to the tenants? Yeah. I love that you paused there, Beverly. You didn't just, you, you really, and I know you were thinking about it too, Nilia, but Beverly had this, this uh, working, working thing. Bye -bye. <laughs> but it's good, you know, it's a good example. Sometimes we do know right away and sometimes we really have to allow the energy to become clear. All right, so we are going to invite you all to join us with the tenants as we wrap up our conversation here today. And I'm just gonna share my screen here so everyone can see them. And you're welcome to, of course, um, either say them out loud or to just close your eyes and allow the words to go wherever within you they are most needed at this time. I open my heart with deep gratitude and intend today to master my spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical energies. I am dedicated to my spiritual practice. I surrender to my soul's purpose through sacred prayer. I own my guidance. I live in partnership with my angels. I serve with a loving heart. I am compassionate in every moment. I trust it's all. I allow immediate forgiveness. I honor my. I listen to the spiritual messages within my physical body. I express myself creatively. I am one with Mother Earth. And so it is. So it is. That was beautiful. I can't stop smiling. I just love you guys so much. So beautiful. I'm just taking a quick peek if there's any comments here. Um, if you have any comments um, or want to add to the conversation um, on Facebook or YouTube, please go ahead and do that. And uh, I'm going to say it publicly. These guys are being ordained on June 11th. Yay. Yay. So awesome. And uh, so in June, I will be joined by Vanessa Everett and Kimberly Kling. They are the, the um, they're six in the class and they are the last pairing. We'll be talking about courage in the month of June. Next week, we're going to be, um, it's going to be Reverend Carolyn and Dawn, as I mentioned before, finishing up on the topic of beauty. So, so much thanks, gratitude, love, hugs to you guys, especially to you, Nelia and Beverly. Thank you so much for Thank just you. a beautiful conversation. I love you. Love you. Bye, everyone. Bye.